Hey guys, it's Michael Todd, and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, we are in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, we are. It's the antique capital, apparently, allegedly, supposedly. I don't know that, but hey, if you want to put it out there like that, bring the people to the yard, do it up. Ugh. Anyhow, we are at a brand new place. I've never been here before. I thought, you know what? Let me explore some other places. Um, we are at Heritage Antique Center, again, in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. I'm excited to get inside. It is, it's looking like a relatively smaller store, but from the reviews and the images that I saw, it looks like it is jam-packed. So let's get in here, see if we can't find anything for our collection. Or for resale. Let's check it out. I'm definitely going to give you a tour, though, because we've never been here before. Let's do it! Alrighty, guys. Right off the bat, as you walk in, we see a whole bunch of cranberry glass. We've got a lot of the uh, Fenton. We've got some of the stained or flashed glass. We've got some hobnail here. Um, very great, very popular Victorian time. So that was fun to see. And here I'm giving you a quick shot. Again, looks are deceiving. This place was jam packed. And of course, right by the entrance, we are seeing a bunch of Christmas. I did at one point ask if this was kind of left over from the holiday, and I was happily informed that no, actually throughout the course of the year, you will find quite a bit of vintage and antique Christmas goods. So that was exciting to hear. Uh, you guys know that I do love the vintage Christmas, so this is definitely a place to hit up throughout the year if you are looking, again, for vintage or antique Christmas items. Now, this little Czechoslovakian, the painted, the orange, and the black, I really, or Czech, um, the little glass face, I really enjoy seeing those pieces, very deco. Those are great uh, for decorating for Halloween. Now here, uh, this is actually a little tree topper. I believe she is West Germany. Um, I have one that is similar, not identical. Next to her, we are seeing this beautiful fold out. Um, I don't know what holiday it would have been for, perhaps for Easter. Um, and then here, again, very popular Victorian times was this taxidermy. It obviously was framed in a shadow box. Um, I thought it was wonderful. It was odd. I know that maybe it's a bit macabre for some folks, but I do enjoy seeing those pieces. Um, we've got some black Americana there. We've got some great antique Christmas postcards. Very exciting to see. Here we've got some little wax dolls. You know, it always amazes me that these little wax dolls have stood up for a hundred plus years <laughs> without having a bunch of cat air and lint all over them. Now, these little girls here, the little angels, it is for the set of four. It's $36 for all four. These are Holt Howard, yes. Um, they're, of course, little candle huggers. It did say as is. Um, I really did debate it because at 36 for four, I definitely think there was room um, for resale on them. I'm not really overly fond of this set. And here we've got a little bit of the souvenir shell art from Florida. Of course, we know that that's super trash-tastic. Um, I like this one. It, did, it was put on a green vase. And then I couldn't believe it, but here, in fact, was another Christmas carousel. This one was very different. Um, it used a lot of more contemporary materials, though it is vintage, of course. I don't know if there would have been uh, something on the top there. There was a small mercury glass ornament that was stuffed down in there, um, but I think that, that would be a relatively easy fix. It was priced at 115 which I think is very fair, um, but I have no place to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, literally. So I resisted. I fought the urge. I'm trying to get better. Um, and I succeeded at least in that moment. So again, I'm giving you an overview and you can just see how much stuff is in here. Every vendor just had so much. They, every vendor maximized every square inch. It was so exciting. I know that for some folks it can feel a little overwhelming. Um, but that's what I would say is, is that in, in, an environment like this, just plan to take a little bit more time. Um, that way you don't rush yourself and you can enjoy it. Um, you can go through things. It is a lot to see, yes. Um, but again, take your time, have fun with it. You never know what you're going to see. You're going to have to look in the nooks and the crannies. It very much is like an adult treasure hunt. Um, so I really do enjoy it personally.
I think it's great to capture on film too. Now here in the back, we're seeing those plastic, um, the licking face kitten, as well as the yellow dog underneath it. It was a salt and pepper shaker set. I think those are really cute. Um, not something I was really looking for for resale. Look at that. Isn't it amazing? Oh my goodness. I love seeing so much stuff. I really, truly do. It, it makes my heart sing. We've got some more glassware. There was a lot of um, utilitarian, a lot of plates, saucers, teacups. Um, I, I mean, it ran the gamut from contemporary, vintage inspired to vintage to antiques, um, high end, kitschy, Art Nouveau, Art Deco. It was all here. So super fun. A lot of linens, too. So if you are a fan of the textiles, definitely um, Heritage is a place that you want to hit up. I didn't dive too much into the textiles, I will say that. I did spot some chenilles, so we'll get to those in just a minute. And here we are seeing, it is um, the, there we go, Jane. I cannot remember her name, even though it's right there on the screen. Um, it's a very distinct, it is California. Um, it's a very distinct sculpt and style to it. They're very simplified. Look at this big... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. The creepy heads were what caught me. And then I was like, baby, you are not feeling life. She said, I'm sick of it all. Um, and right next door to uh, Grumpy Baby was some some holiday items. We do see, of course, some Christmas. We've got some Easter, a little bit, a little bit of St. Patty's thrown in there, too. We are seeing some mercury glass and the Victorian um, ornaments that are part of me, garlands. Um, these ones are a little bit newer. Um, I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the company that did manufacture um, more of the period uh, mercury glass. They are vintage, though they are not original. So there is still collectability. There is still desirability in those pieces, but not as much as the originals. So we're just kind of zooming in here on a little bit of the Christmas. And then we spot our first find. What initially caught my eye was this art glass mushroom. I thought it was really cute. Um, it would be unique. I, you know, I think it's artisan. But then behind it, I was like, w uh, hello, little Viking. I absolutely love this color, this smoky royal blue. It is an uncommon color for Viking. So I would recommend if you are finding Viking glass, and there is your six petals, that is one a major tell um, for a lot, not all of the pieces. Do pick that up. So we do get that bud vase too. I love that color. It's very royal, very regal, if you will. Now, here we are seeing a little hand-painted vase. It is priced at $45, which I think is fair. Um, it does say Japan, so it is not an earlier piece, which kind of surprised me. I thought for sure it would be a Nippon piece, but no, no, it's not. Still beautiful, wonderful to look at. And just below that, we're seeing the disco church. This is where, um, you know, they got down with the disco ball, you know. Gold glitter on the roof, folks. Gold glitter on the roof. Nothing wrong with that. Get your joy. Now, here we're seeing little bitties. I actually have this little package topper here. We've got some cake cock, cake top. <laughs> oh my God. Cup cake toppers. Um, and then I saw these little, like, close eyed, open eyed. These are the little soft vinyl head angels. It was $24. I love her and her little swing. Um, I think it's fair if you were going to collect them at resale. Do I think that I could have made some money if I parted them up and sold them individually? Yes. Did I really feel like taking that time? I was not in the mood for that. So I did leave those behind. I did get a number. I am number three. As I say um, later in the video, I will say Heritage is really good with their floor walkers and they make sure that, you know, they're taking things up for you so that way your hands are free, which, you know, you you need free hands to get more stuff. So um, here we're seeing a whole bunch of Christmas and I love these little pine cone Santas here in the front. Now, these do have the clay or paper mache faces. And I thought, oh, well, these 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 are probably going to be the West Germany ones. Um, and we've got some chenille skiers there. We've got some spun head little gnomes or elves, if you will. We've got some more of like the Santas in the back there. A lot of the glass ornaments. Now, this Santa, the larger one, is in fact a West German piece. Again, oh, look, do you see them? We see little mini bottle brush wreaths there with the mercury glass candle. 
I'm spotting in the back a little baby toy. She didn't have arms. I did elect to go ahead and leave her behind. Um, don't you worry. We're going to get in this case here in just a moment. We're kind of, we're scoping it out, checking what's what. We've got some little branch clips there. Those little candles. Did you see those? Those were adorable. We've got little chenille chicks here. Some chenille Santas with a spun head and the clay face. Those are really cute, but I have enough of those. Some celluloid lambs. And then we get out this chenille frosty the snowman and it turns out no he is japan um so the clay faces typically are a little bit more desirable because they didn't manufacture as many of those um shiny bright was a company but you will see those those do have plastic faces the spun head gnomes i did leave behind yes i did now we do pull out these little mini bottle brush wreaths. Look at how darling that little mercury glass candle on is. I thought initially that the tip was broken. No, it is not. It's actually manufactured. It is finished. So they are smooth edges on the tip of the flame there. So it wouldn't been like a pointy flame. That's where it would have been broken off purposefully. <laughs> <laughs> Not accidentally. So at $8, I do go ahead and I pick those up. So like I said, the textiles, this is just one vendor that has many textiles. Um, this is like crafting fabric. So again, if you do love to craft or sew and you like to use that vintage um, textile fabric, here it is for you. And then out of the corner of my eye, I spotted it. It was a Harold Gale. This is a gold lame Santa, unfortunately um yeah 75 dollars. now listen if that harold gale santa was like his brother here in the red i'm gonna pan and show you here in just a second if his condition was a little bit more like that i would have snapped him up at 75 dollars. just like your rushton santas the odd colors of the off colors gold lemay pink and harold gale did in fact make those those are far more desirable simply because not as many were made now, these are really interesting. These are your satin balls. Obviously, these a lot of people recognize these as craft projects, but there was, in fact, a company that did make and manufacture them out of Japan. I've bought them individually, but I never got them in the package. I did decide to go ahead and leave those behind. I'm trying to be far more selective in choosing the Christmas because there's not a huge push. Now I am going to be having a Christmas sale coming up in July. So those are certainly things I'm keeping my eye on. This is a regret. This is a, not a regret, but a darn it. I forgot it. It's $23. It is a Fenton Vaseline opalescent. Um, and I forgot it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Now, here we are seeing some of the larger bottle brush wreaths. These were priced at $14. This one here I elected to leave behind because it has the soft bristles. I don't like those because they become damaged far easier. This one here you're seeing it's more like full because it has like the sturdier bristles. It stands up to the test of time. Now, it is missing its um, little middle piece here. I picked this up so that I could craft with it. I'm probably going to go ahead and put in like a vintage Christmas corsage um, and add some vintage uh, ornaments to it. And then this little rose bowl caught my eye. Obviously, it is an opalescent. It's kind of like a pink mauvish almost. Um, I do believe it is Fostoria, though the vendor doesn't have it marked as such. I do believe it is Fostoria. And at $10, I said, heck yeah, we're going to get you, you thing of beauty. And yes, we do see the first of several chenilles. This one would fit a queen bed, as was kindly pointed out to me. I was like, oh, it's a queen and queen. $25. I was like, heck yes, we unfolded it. Unfortunately, when we unfolded it, it did have some tears in it. So I did decide to leave it behind. I really try to focus on very high end, high quality chenille that you don't have to repair or spot remove any stains. Now, these guys were really interesting. They're little cardboard boxes. Obviously, they kind of nest within one another. I loved the vintage um, images on them. It was $8. The set is complete. I thought these would be great in a children's room or, in fact, for a child to play with. Um, but I thought that it would be great also to kind of decorate with all of the colors. Um, you can kind of switch them out and they stack away easily. 
I was checking the condition here. They're in really good condition to you guys. So I most definitely pick those up again. I love those images. I think that they're more of like a 60s, 70s. Um, so again, vintage, though, I think that they it was really popular. You remember back in the day that, that uh, 60s through about 78 to use more of those antique imageries, kind of like the sketched. Now, here we are in a different vendor again, just stuff everywhere uh, definitely taking our time i like these little these are the household uh, angels from napco they were only priced at ten dollars i don't do very well um with the kitschy uh figurines so i kind of stray away from those i really enjoy those personally but they don't do that well for resale here of course we have a fenton glass bird it was priced at only ten dollars so i most certainly Pick that one up at 10 bucks. She's a beauty. And of course, her tail, in fact, will fluoresce if you would expose it to black light. Now, I am focusing on these uh, ceramic birds here. I absolutely love them. I think they're pretty. They're a great splash of color. Um, you can kind of mix and match them throughout the seasons. You know, birds live year round. Um, <laughs> Shocking, I know. So look at that. You can tell all your friends you learned something new here on the Cult of Vintage. <laughs> Birds live year-round. Um, so yeah, those are cute, fun. Again, just a little quick splash of color, and you can switch them out easily. Now down here, you all know by now I love the clear glass, especially in the opalescent. It is, yes, Fenton. Um, it was priced at only $26. This was an original Fenton piece, swung vase. Um, I love it. I decided to kind of put that one behind because I've been selling so much of this similar style and era of Fenton, and I wasn't overly excited. I like to bring new items in. Speaking of new items, I would absolutely love to bring in a set of these some point um, perfume bottles we've got again very hollywood regency the lipstick container the jewelry box this one was absolutely stunning it was an odd shape i don't know what one would call it teardrop maybe teardrop maybe they were priced accordingly um i'm not mad at it like i say everybody gotta pay their bills um these were in beautiful condition i love that amber colored glass to it i know it's a lot it's definitely a look um but put together you want to talk about luxurious and high end it's right there now this vendor had got some beautiful jewelry we've got a little half doll there again with the jewelry i typically will buy on aesthetic this is what immediately attracts me to a piece if it has a marking uh, i will say that i do look it up because i'm not overly familiar with dozens upon dozens if not hundreds or thousands of jewelry manufacturers so again it's the aesthetics and then we go from there Talking about aesthetics, something that caught my eye was this beautiful yellow chenille. Unfortunately, there were some rust-colored stains, and we know what that means. Typically, it would be blood, and that's not... I'm a germaphobe, you know that, but it obviously is old. It's We're not going to catch anything from it. I'm realistic with my... <laughs> phobia <laughs> but it was a beautiful basket on the yellow the brown the pinks the blues but with that stain i did decide to go ahead and leave it behind there was the pink one um, i didn't film it. it there were some small tears in it so again i left that one behind now this is some absolutely beautiful slip work here um i love the cranes on this or moriagi um i think it's slip work i think that's kind of maybe the more modern term. Again, we are seeing one of those Hollywood Regencies. This one is a vase. I've never actually seen a vase in the style. That was interesting. The vendor did have it marked as is. I didn't want to pull it out. Um, we've got some beautiful jewelry caskets here, again, in a very Art Nouveau style. Um, some more contemporary carnival glass here in the blues. Uh, what else are we going to see? We're going to see some more. Look at this. Just It was everywhere. I mean, she said, I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm not here to play games. And I did want to see what this casket was priced at. And then I flip it over and a good tell on these, it was more of a modern um, piece. A lot of the ones on the bottom, actually, um, it's done in a spelter. Um, so it's a mixed metal, kind of like a scrap metal, if you will, at the time. And those typically would have exposed uh, bottoms rather than a finished sculpted and then painted. Little Napco Santa here. He's cute. The cream and the white. I didn't like the the paint job on that one so i was like mm, not so much <laughs> but an absolutely beautiful display now i did see this it is a flemish or the technique is um pie 
I can never say this word, pyrography. Um, obviously, it was kind of burnt on there. I thought that was beautiful uh, Flemish because it was very popular. Um, and a lot of it was very imported at the time. But this one was great because it was very Christmassy with the holly um, and ivy in her hair. So that was fun to see. Okay, so the next vendor... <laughs> <laughs> the next vendor said, oh, yeah, well, I got you all, B. I'm going to really maximize every square inch, and I'm going to include the floor on it. Again, I know it can be overwhelming for some folks, but I enjoy it. It's a treasure hunt. It's fun. Now, I do see some pieces in here, the little art glass deer. Don't worry. I was able to get in the cabinet. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of damage, and the vendor did, in fact, mark it on the tag. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and leave him behind. I did see the green opalescent. It was not priced where I would personally want it to be. Um, we're seeing some kitschy little poodles here. Again, priced retail. There's nothing wrong with that. But for resale, not where I would want it to be. Um, the glass animals, those are okay. They're very run-of-the-mill. I didn't. I wasn't excited really by any of them. Um, no unique animal, no unique shape or coloring to them. Again, it's about the subject matter that's going to sell it for you. Um, some redware chickens up there. It looks like it's a sugar and a creamer set. Talking about subject matter, this little leatherette uh, vinyl tiger did catch my eye. He was cute. It was $10. I think that's very fair, and there was room for profit on it. Um, but I just really wasn't feeling it, and I see the chartreuse lava glaze. This is very gonder. Um it is an Ohio pottery company. I think they're highly underrated. Um, I don't know. Gonder has a very specific chartreuse color, and they loved using a lava glaze. There was no price on it. Um, if it was like $10 or under, I probably would have gotten it. Um, but I just didn't want to risk it because it's a very specific color. And again, I'm kind of showing you it's you think that it's a small place. It's not so far as square footage. And again, vendors, <laughs> the, I, I, I loved this place. It, there was just so much like you could literally spend all day here all day and not see it all. We've got a little like colonial Amberina glass pitcher man here. He was curious. Again, odd subject matter. So that is what caught my eye. Uh, got some little bisque. It looks like we've got some Royal Copley and some Napco there. You can kind of tell by those eyes, those black eyes on the figurines. Uh, what caught my eye down here was the blue opalescence. I love them. Uh, the cornucopia in Fenton Hobnail. And then this little guy, he's going to pop up here for you. Boo! <laughs> this little derpy lamb. He is priced at 22 Kind of American bisque, maybe not American bisque. Um, the paint was a little much, no airbrushing. Um, and, you know, American bisque loved them, some airbrushing glaze. So I did leave them behind. I think it would be cute for a collector. Again, not for resale. Maximizing the space, maximizing the space. Now, this was an interesting subject matter, is this art glass giraffe. Um, he's really heavy. That is a solid, thick piece of glass at the base. Unfortunately, it does look like, you know, he has a chip there um, on his chest. So he did decide to leave him behind. And that was sad because again, subject matter, the unusualness, the uniqueness, that is what's going to sell a piece. If you can walk into, or you feel like, oh, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this then why would you get it for resale if anybody can walk in? Um, now here we've got a Royal Dalton. This is the Poseidon. We like to use the Greek god names here at the Cult of Vintage. Um, love it. Love the subject matter. And then this caught my eye. Very Capodimonte. I mean, talk about a look. Look at that shade. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Um, um... I love a Victorian look. That might be a little much even for me. Not going to lie. <laughs> oh, gosh. But it was in really good condition. I mean, it's a look. <laughs> I don't know what look it is, but, you know. We've got a little left in holly and berry down there. 
um, some clear Fenton. And then up top, of course, we're seeing a lot of the Italian glass. We've got some amber. I thought it was lovely, especially with the window behind it, catching all of the light. Um, I love seeing this, that optic pattern to it. Ooh, do you see it? Don't you love that? It's so fun, so fantastic. Um, and thankfully, it was on top of a glass cabinet, so I kind of peeked underneath so I could see prices and maybe things in the back. And what jumped out at me was this very floral inspired, very iris or daffodil, if you will. Um, it is priced at $14, and I decided to take a risk because I absolutely love um it's simple, yet it's intricate, and I loved the pattern. Now, I did see this one um, kind of like a tulip. This is this one reminds me of a tulip. Maybe some people arose. This one was also priced at $14. Unfortunately, there was a little boober on it here. We're going to see it on the lip. It, it's kind of like black. I don't know if that was a Sharpie. I ran my finger over it. It was a little rough, um, and I didn't want to take the risk. It's just it's so there especially being black, that I was like, uh, I'm sorry, little one, you're going to have to stay behind. But still a very pretty piece. Now, this one, this booth, this vendor kind of stood out. Obviously, it's um, infantry, it's militia, it's military. We've got explosives. <laughs> Why not? Um, a lot of helmets. You know, it's not my kind of area of interest, but it's still fun to see. So I definitely wanted to to showcase it there. All right. Are we ready? Here it goes. It's about to jump off. So, yes, we still have a tinsel tree. It is a pom-pom. Um, it was priced at $250. Um, I, no, actually, I think, yeah, it was $250. Um, not where I would need it to be for resale. Um, we've got some beautiful pink satin glass. This is a flower frog, so it would have sat in the middle of a vase. These are reproduced a lot. So I always get super nervous about buying these. Um, and then down out of the corner of my eye, do you see that beautiful green color? It just jumped out at me. It is this beautiful art glass elephant. Um, unfortunately, there was no price on the elephant. However, I did ask if they could contact the vendor. Unfortunately, by the time I had checked out, um, they had not gotten back. So oh, sad face. He did have to get left behind. Um, we've got some little crackle glass, the Kuanaha, Kuanaha. I know I'm going to be corrected down in the comments because I never pronounce it right, but <laughs> those do really well if you can get them inexpensively and if you can sell them as a lot. This is what I would recommend. You know, if you're going to spend $2 or less on those, definitely snatch them up. And then I would sell, say sell them as a lot. And you're probably going to do better than if you were to sell them individually piece by piece. Um, it's far more impactful, especially if you have beautiful photography or if you are filming it for whatever reason and you can catch those colors. That, again, the look, the collection, the instant collection is what's going to sell it. We got up close and a personal there with the tinsel tree, the pom-poms. They were trying to pow-pow me in the face, and I was like, don't you dare, tree. Again, a lot of beautiful. We've got some hummels here. We've got some kitsch. And then this caught my eye. I was like, who are you, you thing of beauty? And I was like, oh, you're $75? Oh, you're $45 for a teacup? And then I was like, I don't know. This is really strange. It's really unusual. It looks very, the sculpt looked very high end of course the painting did and then we got it out and i flipped it over and i was like kathy ireland who what kathy girl okay get your game on sister friend um apparently kathy ireland did a very high end very luxe look this is just one example i know that there are swans that she did there are sea turtles um and it turns out um these prices were far below retail um, there were no chips. There were no cracks. I was kind of struggling because I didn't want the the spout there to pop off on me. Um, I, I love this piece. This has probably got to be one of my most favorite pieces I have ever found. I am in love. I am enthralled. The sculpt is amazing. I snatched those up. You guys, that teapot goes for about $225. The teacup goes for, like, there's two listed. It's like $145. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to buy you and I'm going to sell you together. And we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how it goes. Again, a lot of vintage. We're leaning a little more antique inspired. Um, Christmas in here. 
we've got some lithographs, some of that Dutch pottery, not my thing. Um, a little bit of everything kind of sprinkled in. We've got a shoe bank because who doesn't need a brown shoe bank? I mean, that's been missing in my life. Darn it, Michael. This was cute. A little chenille bell. I've never seen one of those before. Obviously a package topper. Again, look at the Christmas. The Christmas is still here. It is still strong. Um, and there are so many vendors that, that do have Christmas. So I, you know, I had to love it. That was interesting. It looked to be the top of a Victorian era, 1800s um, child's game, and they framed it. So that was fun. Here we are seeing some of the original mercury glass garlands. These are the larger ones. Um, they were not priced where I would want them to be in the condition, hello there, um, that I would necessarily want them to be. I will say if you can find the long strands in the odd shapes, again, you wanna keep in mind that you want to find the originals. Those are going to be extraordinarily profitable for you. Now here we're seeing some, again, Victorian era. Uh, ornaments. This is a small little tree topper. It's $50. Fair going rate. Um, 30 for this guy here. Again, it's a little tree topper, if you will. This is kind of like a little mixed bag. I was kind of tempted by this one because I was like, I could craft. And I was like, no, Michael, stop it. And that's an adorable little windmill for 30 Again, the subject matter. I've never seen those before. So she probably could have charged a little bit more for them. And talking about a little bit more, here we have got... Um, <laughs> <laughs> some expensive fiesta wear candlesticks fiesta wear is not my thing i know that a lot of you out there just love those super saturated fun colorful glazes um so when i see it i do like to capture it on film um, i think that it looks beautiful it reads beautiful on camera and i can certainly understand why somebody would want to have a collection of that it's just bright and cheery you know you're kind of gloomy especially in these winter cold months it's fun to see all of those colors now we do have some swung glass here, swung vases, I guess I should say. We've got a little bit of Fenton and right next door to it at 35, the pitcher um, right next door to it. Again, we have got some, let's flip it over. It is Northwood. Um, no, maybe that is Fenton. No, I think that one is Fenton actually. Um, I think that the vendor called it, did I think, Oh, they didn't have it listed as either. I think that one's actually uh, Fenton, not Northwood. You'll have to pardon me on that. Some blue lucite grapes. Oh, yes. Um, and if you didn't know, a lot of your lucite will, in fact, fluoresce, interestingly enough. Now, these I absolutely love. I love these pastel colors. These are fantastic. These would go great for your spring and summer. Again, bright and cheery without being very heavy, very overly saturated. Um, but those pastel colors, I, I kind of prefer those a little bit more. Lots of Christmas. Now here, again, is an example of some of the more modern. It's nine feet for $25, which is a great deal. Um, it really truly is, especially if you love that look. These, again, are vintage. They are not original. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, especially if you want to use them on your tree. Um, they're in excellent condition. We do have some popped bulbs. Um, but again, they're tiny little glass bulbs. What can you expect? Now, these do have the star tag on it. The star tag wouldn't be foil. It would have actually just been a plain cardboard. Um, you can also look at the strands. You can judge it by the cording. Um, when the cording is very white, chances are it is new, vintage inspired, antique inspired. Um, you want to kind of look for the yellowing. And the yellowing is a tell on those. I know that's odd, but you want to look for the age. Here we've got some unsteady camera work, trying to focus <laughs> on some spaghetti poodles, snobby mother with, well, I guess she is snobby because she's like, do you see how my child is dressed? She's in her Sunday best 24 seven. Okay, okay, it's snotty poodle. But of course I do catch, he's $50. Yes, it is a, this is a clay face or paper mache, if you will. He is a pine cone elf. This one is a little mushroom man. And you're like $50. And I'm like, yeah, $50. You know why? Because he's wearing that mushroom hat and he's got little mushrooms and he's got his little palm tree. The uniqueness. Um, you don't, I, I have never found one in, in real life out in the wild. So that was a thrill. Um, at $50, it, it wasn't hard for me to pass. 
<laughs> Here we go. Look at that. 1999. Oh, yes, folks. They were reproducing things. Um, again, it's something you have to be mindful for. Make sure that you look. If the paint seems too good, then it probably is. Again, a lot of these things were made to be disposable. So it wasn't like they were taking their time. Um, you kind of want to look for a little sloppy sloppy paint work. And then this little baby, I was like, girl, what? What are you? <laughs> what are you sniffing? Jeez. She is bugged out. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, here we've got a little red flocked deer. Unfortunately, his ear was broken off. Thankfully, he is still in package. So his ear is still there if you want to craft with it. Some more mercury glass garland. I love the pink. The pink is a harder color to get, um, but just not priced where we would want it to be for resale. Again, a lot of the chenille. I'm excited to go back here. Now, this is the last item that we are going to pick up today. It is a green. Look at that. UV verified. Go ahead. UV verified. I love it. Um, so we are going to pick that up for only $10. Those typically do very well for me. Um, again, you're probably looking at 20s late 20s through the 30s, very early 40s for that piece. Got her toe on the line for antique, but not quite there. Now, I love these little guys here. Look at this. He's the big cheese. $39.99, a lot of little condiment jars. These were extraordinarily popular. Again, um, mid-late 50s, super fun, super kitsch. Got a little shih tzu, is it maybe? A little poodle there. A little biscuit jar, cookie jar in the back. A lot of little anthropomorphic salt and pepper shakers. This woman, I don't know, they should get a divorce. Those two do not look like they are happily married. No, just end it. Live your lives separately. Be happy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a lot of pigs. Again, a lot of animals. Um, this was fun to see. I will say I didn't pick anything up. Um, I don't know. I'm not big on the animals, though. I do like the pigs there, the little celluloid pigs. Um, and then this little poor one back here is like a little butcher's uh, display. <laughs> Ooh, a little morbid jowl butt. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you like ham, if you like bacon, it's coming from somewhere. A lot of Christmas is in here. Again, have I mentioned that they sell Christmas year round? Heritage Antiques in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Super fun to see. Um, the condition of the items in this actual uh, case here were excellent. Um, so that was super fun to see. Um, paintwork really good. I'm seeing the Commodore Noel set. I actually had those before and sold those. Those did very well. Um, the vendor has not only one, but two, but three. I think there's four <laughs> in total in here. Yep. See, there is our second set. I love the little uh, Christmas tree salt and pepper shakers there. Oh, there is set number three. Is there set? Is there four sets? Nope. Maybe there was only three. Oh, well. <laughs> choo choo santa train i actually have had one of these lights before those are fun again super mid-century woo yeah just a little bit to see um i probably could have made this video like four hours long easily um of course we've got a little bit of the jadeite there i don't know a whole lot about the jadeite um i do know to make sure that i keep my eye out for that five inch mi mixing bowl <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's the rarest and hardest one to get now that white opalescent fenton back there um i actually had those in a vaseline glass it turns out that they're a like you can flip them up upside down they can be a votive or they can be a taper candle holder some great milk glass there loved that atomic looking um canister set there that stacks on top of one another just all kinds of goodies. I love seeing all of the small smoosh together. It's so fun because you're like, ooh, what's in here? I'm such a child. Mm, I'm like, did I miss anything? I'm literally watching it with you guys. Oh, now I've had these little naughty Santas before or elves before. I've had the one on the right. Those do really well. So that was fun.
Now up next, I am seeing some antique ephemera. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. It is a, apparently a French manufactured uh, ladies face powder. Um, these are from 1920 from the ladies home journal. Um, the imaging was absolutely stunning. They were priced at $18 each. Now, uh, do I think that maybe there was some more room on those? Yes. And only because of the subject matter. Um, obviously very fairy tale. This one I think was my favorite because it had little fairies, little kind of like kid fairies along with it. Um, I did elect to keep them behind uh, because I was unsure. Well, guys, that is it. We are going to wrap it up outside here in just a second. Well, Heritage Antiques, looks are deceiving. That is for sure. Um, you know, it's always, you never know what to expect going to a new place, especially if you're like, oh, that place looks small. Then you get inside and you're like, okay, well you have maximized every square inch and I ain't got nothing but appreciation and love for that. Wonderful time here at Heritage Antiques, again in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Incredibly friendly staff. They were prompt. They were right there to make sure your items were taken up front. I greatly appreciate that, especially filming. Um, yeah, so ooh, amazing experience. Again, you just, it's one of those things, you know, and this is a two hour drive for me. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, you can look at reviews online, but that only tells you so much. But, you know, you guys, I really do try to put forth the effort to bring you places um, that haven't been captured on video yet because I want to share new experiences, new places, promote new businesses. And that is really important to me. Um, so I, I really do want to take the moment to thank you all for viewing and subscribing and liking and commenting. Um, it re I really do appreciate that. So as always, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.